Hebrews chapter 6. I'm going to give you some context before we jump into today's reading. Hebrews, um, we don't know exactly who wrote the book of Hebrews, but we are for sure on his intended audience. So we're not quite sure who authored the book, but we are certain on the crowd that he's writing to. The author is writing to a crowd of really Jewish people that have left their practice, left their faith, and they are now trying to go the Jesus way. They're trying to follow God. They're trying to follow Jesus. In the midst of becoming Christians or followers of the way, uh, this grace thing and Jesus thing is a little bit difficult for them, so they start to get kind of shaky in their faith. So they, they start to waver a little bit, and they actually want to go back to what is comfortable, back to what is convenient, back to what is familiar, back to their families. And the writer of Hebrews writes and says, Nah, fam, back is not an operative word for the believer. Come on, anybody thankful today that Jesus never calls you backwards? Come on, he only calls you forward in the name of God. Come on, anybody believe today the best is yet to come? He's calling you forward. He's wooing you forward into the plan that he has for your life. He says, no, we're not going back to the law. We're not going back to religion. We're not going back to that old life. Everything's better in Jesus. The worship's better. The destination's better. The coffee is better. Somebody say amen. amen. Everything is better in Jesus. We're not going back to that old way because we found Jesus, we found grace, and everything is better in this space. I want to encourage some people, you've come to conference this weekend. It's not that conference changed your life, it's that Jesus changed your life. You didn't find a great conference. Come on, you found a great Savior this weekend. Somebody say amen. Watch what the writer of Hebrews says to the crowd and his intended audience. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. Watch these scriptures as it comes on the screens. It says, so it is impossible for God to lie. For we know that his promise and his vow will never change. And now we have run into his heart to hide ourselves in his faithfulness. This is where we find his strength and his comfort, for he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time, an unshakable hope. We have this certain hope like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls to God himself. Our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat which sits in the heavenly realm beyond the sacred threshold and where Jesus, everybody say Jesus. Now a little bit louder than that, everybody say Jesus. Where Jesus, our forerunner, has gone in before us, he is now and forever our royal priest like Melchizedek. I like that. The writer is riding to the crowd. And he's like, y'all remember Melchizedek, right? And they're like, yeah, for sure. Which, by the way, Melchizedek is just an awesome Bible name. Like, anybody love Bible names? Like, my favorite Bible name in all the Bible is Mephibosheth. <laughs> like, his parents had him, and they were like, we shall call him Mephibosheth. <laughs> He's like, y'all remember Melchizedek, right? And they're like, oh, we grew up on Melchizedek for sure. He's like, okay, well, remember Melchizedek? We have now and forever a greater priest. He is a truer priest, and his name is Jesus. I don't know if you knew this before today, but you have your own personal prophet, and you have your own personal priest. His name is Jesus, and he's here to prophesy over you. He's here to go to God on behalf of your needs. Come on, anybody thankful today that you have your own personal priest and your own personal prophet, Jesus Christ? I want to preach a message today. You can write down the title. It's called, The Place I Crave. The Place I Crave. I'm going to pray and believe that God will come today and encourage us and speak to our hearts and lift up our heads and let us realize that he has a greater future and a greater plan than we've ever imagined for our lives. Amen? Come on, let's bow our heads. Jesus, we thank you today that you are awesome and amazing. 
We thank you that you are good and you are great. You are greatly to be praised. We ask today that you would open up our eyes so we can see you and open up our ears so we can hear you. Do the unique and profound God thing that happens when your word is open and your word is communicated. Let it land in good soil today. We love you. We live for you. Bless every father. And Lord, as a city together, we're asking you to bless the Miami Dolphins this year. Lord, we need a miracle of God. We need a miracle of heaven. So do what you can, Lord. Do what you can. In Jesus' name, and everybody said together. Come on, Ustedes. Come on, clap your monos. Let's get some faith right now in Jesus' name. May the spirit of Don Shula rest this year on the dolphins. Amen. Um, any, uh, any food lovers in the house? Anybody love food? Where the foodies at? Oh, man. Don't let the skinny jeans fool you. Your boy loves to eat. I love it. Man, I love some food. I love, you ever get a craving? You ever get like a food craving where you're like, I have to eat this food now? This was my favorite part of my wife being pregnant. My wife got pregnant four times. My favorite part of her being pregnant was I'd come home from work. I'd walk through the door. I'd be like, all right, what's it going to be today? And she'd be like, today I'm craving Thai food. I'm like, your wish is my command. Let's go. Next day I come home, like, all right, what's it going to be today? She's like, ugh, today I'm craving teriyaki. Similar to yesterday, but let's go. Like, I just love it. One time I walk home, she was like, today, ugh, today I'm craving ice cream. I'm like, I'm with you. I was with everything until one day I came home, I was like, what's it going to be today? And she was like, ugh, I want a pickle. <laughs> like, you're sick. You, dis you disgust me. You know that? I, I get a food craving once a week on the same day, same hour. Happens every week. Same day, same hour. Every Sunday at about 3 o'clock, I start craving Chick-fil-A. I don't know what it is. I can't explain it to you. About 3 o'clock, I'm like, dang, I don't know why, but I feel like, uh, can we? Uh, and to be honest, I don't just crave the chicken. I want the French fries. Like, I'm down for Chick-fil-A French fries. And if I'm really being honest, it's not just the fries. I want the sauce. Come on, somebody. Like, they got a little trinity going on. You know what I'm saying? Little father, son, holy what? Just start craving it like I now, ah, like I need it now. I want to talk today about the reality whether you knew this or not, your soul has a craving. Your soul has a longing. And there's only one person, there's only one place, there's only one thing that can satisfy your soul that can satisfy your desire. Oh, I love how the psalmist wrote it. Listen to the words of David that had come on the screen. Psalm 42, it says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. I want to tell you what your soul really needs. Your soul craves to be in the presence of the Lord. There's nothing that's going to satisfy you. No purchase, no vacation, no relationship, no, no amount of success, no amount of followers. Anybody thankful today that is Jesus and Jesus alone that can satisfy my soul? As a deer panteth for the water brooks, so my soul longs for you, O oh God longs to be in your presence. I love what the writer of Hebrews is saying here. He says, because you are a promise giver and a promise keeper, because you're not a man that you would lie, because you give promises and fulfill your promises, therefore, because of your character, God, because of your nature, therefore, I run into your heart. I'm going to give you four things to write down to encourage you today. Write down, number one, you run to what you trust. You run. Whatever you trust in, you run to. 
So the writer of Hebrews is saying, because of your trustworthiness, because of who you are, I run into your heart. I want to encourage you today. Christianity is about learning how to get good at running. In fact, if you're going to stay around in this thing, you got to learn how to run. you got to become like a Forrest Gump for Jesus. I started running. Don't make fun of my Forrest Gump. That was pretty good. But the Bible says we flee from temptation. Like we run from the evil stuff. Oh, I love this weekend because it's not about just what we're running away from. We're not just running away from toxic relationships. We're not just running away from our old ways. We're not just running away from our addictions. It's not what we're running from, it's what we're running to. I'm running to God. I'm running to Voo Church. I'm running to his house. I'm running to my Voo crew. I'm running to Growth Track. I'm running to next year's conference. Come on, anybody down to get good at running. I'm running to God because I Trust in God. Whatever you trust in, you run to. And by the way, some of us have been trusting in the wrong thing. Whatever you're running to when you get stressed out, whenever you run to when you're anxious, whatever you run to when times are hard, you, it's just revealing what your trust is in. Some of us are putting our trust in a bottle. Some of us are putting our trust in some pills. Some of us are putting our trust in social media. I do not need temporary solutions. I need long-term fixes, and that is only found in the presence of the living God. I'm not running to something that will numb me for an evening or destroy Distract me for a weekend. I need something that if I drink from it, I'll never be thirsty again. That only happens when I drink of living waters. Somebody give Jesus a mighty shout of praise. I don't need a distraction and I don't need to be numbed. I don't need something for a week, a weekend, or a month. I need something that's going to satisfy me. You ever notice how these things promise to fulfill you, but always leave you empty, dry, and full of shame. Ain't nobody going to conference this week and going, I've, I'm so ashamed that I got washed and forgiven and healed, and I got so many great relationships, I just, I feel awful about it. Whatever you turn to, you trust in. And we are saying, the writer of Hebrews is saying, we trust in God. You're a promise giver, promise keeper. I know your character. I know your nature. Therefore, I run into your heart. Notice the difference between religion and relationship. Religion walks to God like, I'm good. I'm cool. Don't need anything. Don't need anybody. I'm fine. When you're broken and when you've got issues and you're going through some stuff, you run to the house of God. You run to your, come on, food crew. You run to, because I'm not playing games. I need Jesus. I'm, I'm desperate. I'm broken. I'm coming to God with everything I've got. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Just love that because some of us today, we've got to increase our trust in God. Because if you trust in God, you'll run to God. You go, I feel, I feel pressure. I feel like this is happening in my business, in my home life, in my marriage, with my kids. I'm not going to numb. I'm not going to get the temporary. I'm going for the everlasting thing. I'm going to run to God right now. It's just, it's just a revelation of your trust. What are you going to trust in? For me, I want to trust in God. I'll never forget growing up, I played high school basketball. And on my basketball team, my coach did a drill with us. He had us do the trust fall. And so he would line up half the team on one side with our arms out like this, and the other half would be on that side with our arms out, and then he'd stick a chair right here, and he would say, okay, you've got to cross your arms and fall backwards into your teammates' arms, and it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to establish trust. So we would do this, you know, and then I'll never forget when I got up on the chair. I, I got up on the chair, and I look at, back at my teammates, I'm like, hey, y'all don't play no games now. Your boy is fragile. <laughs> and what we are saying when we run to God is, God, I choose to trust in you. 
I'm not going to trust in these things that I've been turning to. They leave me dry and empty and filled with shame. I'm running to the God man. I'm running to my Savior. I'm running to the thing that can heal me and fulfill me. Come on, clap today if you're down to run to Jesus because you trust in Jesus. So therefore, because of who you are, I run into your heart and I hide in your faithfulness. Write down number two today. Hide in his faithfulness. I want to remind some people today, our God is faithful. Faithfulness is who he is, and faithful is what he does. He's a faith. Has God been faithful to anybody in this house? Come on, just clap right now. If God has been better to you than you deserve, greater to you than you imagine, when you were faithless, he remained faithful. Come on, just clap right now. Has he been faithful to your finances, faithful to your family, faithful to your children? He's faithful to a thousand generations. Come on, foo. Let's give praise to a faithful Jesus right now. Oh, I love God. He said, God's so good. He says, run into my heart and hide in my faithfulness. Just under my shade, under my umbrella. Ella, Ella. <laughs> Just came to me, I had to say it. Okay. <laughs> hide in my faithfulness. See, our problem, some of us, you go through hard times and you're like, I got to solve it. I got to strive. I got to earn. I got to make it happen. And God's like, no, 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 no. Come, 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 come. You just, you just hide in my faithfulness and you watch me go out and fight your battle. <laughs> God's so good. God, God's crazy. God, everything God does is different than the way we do stuff. God's math doesn't even make sense to us. God says things like this. He says, the first, this is so God, shall be last, and the last shall be first. Watch God. God goes like this. The greatest of them all is the servant of them all. This is God. God. God does things different. One of my favorite stories about God in the Old Testament, they got ready to go out and do a big uh, battle. They were going into war. So they got all the guys, all the warriors lined up, all the big, you know, CrossFit and the people that came to the boot camp at 7 in the morning. 800 signed up, 200 showed up. What? That's a movie right there. So Pastor Rich's gym and all the guys lined up. You know, leg day, never done it. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you guys laughed a bit aggressive on that, I felt like. <laughs> Just felt like that was mean-spirited. <laughs> so I lined up all the guys, all, all, all the big, and then God's so good. God's like, hey, uh, can we get Zach and Manny and the crew? We need all the worship leaders out here in the front because the way we're going to win this battle is with our hands lifted and our voice raised and we're going to praise God and we're going to see the victory be won. Somebody thank God right now. I'm just going to hide in your faithfulness and I'm going to let your faithfulness go before me. Some of us need to get good at running and others of us need to get good at hiding. Hide in his faithfulness and let God go before you. Oh, I love this psalm. Watch here in Psalm 91. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, what will I say? He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him I It's going to trust you, Jesus. It's going to trust you, God. You got a, you got a, a cousin or an uncle be like, you better get out there and solve it. And you're like, no, no, you don't understand. My God can go before me. I need to hide in his faithfulness because for my soul, this is what I need. I don't know if you noticed this, but the writer of Hebrews was very deliberate to tell us what happens when we do these things. When you run into his heart and you hide in his faithfulness, there are some things that transpire while you're hiding. God doesn't just have you in protective witness services so you can just be hidden out for a little bit. No, God has you in hiding because he wants to do something in you so he can do something through you. But he's brought you here to his table. He's brought you here to his refuge. He's brought you here to his shadow so you can get into his presence to get to, to you what you need. So because you are a promise giver, promise keeper, 
because of your character and your nature and who you are. I run into your heart and I hide in your faithfulness. And it is here that I receive strength and comfort, empowerment to seize, and an unshakable hope. All this happens in hiding. All this happens while you're resting in his shadow. Write down number three today. Everything I need is in his presence. Everything I need is in the presence of the Lord. Everything that my soul really needs is found in the presence of Jesus. Come on, clap right now if you love the presence of God. Come on, just thank, right, thank God right now if you are addicted to the sweetness and the beauty of the presence of the living God. He said, when you come in here, you get strength. Oh, I love this because you can you can see it happening all weekend at conference. You can see it happening right now on Sunday. You, you, you see people, you might have walked in one way, <laughs> but you're going to leave another. I love this about Jesus. When you encounter Jesus, you come in and you're tired and you're broken and you're depleted and you feel overwhelmed and you want to quit, but you get in the presence of God and all of a sudden you start getting the eye of the tiger back. You start getting your confidence back. You start giving your I can back. You start getting some swag back. Come on, is there anybody that has found some newfound strength in the presence of the living God? Come on, give them a praise right now. I'm getting my strength back. <laughs> Happens every time you encounter Jesus. You walk in one way, you leave another way. You encounter Jesus and you're like, I'm down, I'm discouraged, I'm defeated. We lost LeBron, Dwayne's gone. Our pets' heads are falling off. But all of a sudden, although I was weary, now I'm like, let's go. People are like, whoa, did you, um, did you take a vacation? I got with Jesus. Some of us are so stooped in believing, I need a week off, I need a month off, I need a break. You don't need a vacation. You don't need a nap. You need an encounter with the presence of the living God that will change you from the inside out, that will give you more motivation, more faith, more ability, more courage and stamina than you could ever bargain for. Somebody praise him right now. I'm getting my strength back today. Oh, I love the Bible. It says even youths will grow weary. Even young people will get tired. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall rise on the wings of an eagle. They will walk and not grow weary. They will run and not faint. Why? Because I spent time in the presence of the living God. I got my strength back. I don't know about you, but I want to get stronger. I want to get stronger. I want to get better. That only happens. It's not retail therapy. It's not some bottle or pill. It's not some vacation. It's not, a rela it's not an opportunity. It's just being with Jesus. I get my strength back. I can change a city. I can build a church. I can raise a family. I can blossom my marriage. I can change a world. I can touch the nation. All from the presence of the living. I wish you'd receive some strength from the living God today. It's all from Jesus. It's all from Jesus. I get my strength and I get comfort. Oh, I love this part. Because the, the, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, I come into his presence and I start to worship God. And all of a sudden I receive, I get enveloped by the divine encourager. The Holy Spirit comforts me. You, um, you ever try and snuggle with a blanket that's too small? Like a blanket that hits you at your ankles? <laughs> Who's testing these blankets? Are they using nine-year-olds to test our blankets? But you ever get one of them big old whole family can fit under the blanket blankets? We got a blanket at our house, all five of us. We just, we just, six of us, we just roll. I, I, I lost track of my kids right there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a lot of them. It's a lot. I got a minivan. I got, we got a nan. I can't, I, we got two strollers. I don't even know. I got to run into his heart. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you, 
you, you, ever, you ever notice when you get in his presence, <laughs> everything you were so anxious about just fades in the background? <laughs> everything you walked in with and your burdens and your concerns and your worries and how am I going to pay for this and is this going to happen and this relationship's broken and that you get in his presence, you're like, oh, I don't have any problems. Where'd they go? And it, if I can be honest, it's not that your problems changed, it's that you changed. And I just get comfort. The comforter comes and comforts me. I, 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 I would just make a decision if I were you, that every time the church's doors are open, you're going to be there. It's not that church needs you, it's that you need church. Because you need his presence. You need to just sign up for conference right now. I'm like, I need this thing. I need a couple days in his presence because I got to get comfort for what I'm facing. I need comfort. And these things promised to comfort me, but they left me dry, empty, and filled with shame. And Jesus comforts me, and I feel great about it. I feel good about it. I feel like I know where I'm going. He says, you hide in my faithfulness, and, and you get strength back and comfort. And I love this one, an empowerment to seize. This is so God. Because God is like a good parent. God's like a good parent that has a 24-year-old that moves home back in the basement. You can stay for three months, son. We're so happy to have you back eating the food out of our fridge. You are welcome here for three months. But after three months, you got to go. God's so good. God's like, come on a Sunday. Come to conference. But listen, you can't stay here. You've got a gospel to preach. You've got a city to change. You've got a church to build. There's a calling on your life. There's a future I have. And I've got, you're not going to stay in hiding. you got to go. Somebody praise him right now. Go, therefore, into all the nations. Preach the gospel. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I'm with you. Somebody praise him right now. And thank God that he's ascending God. The problem with most of us is that we love his presence so much, we just want to stay and like frolic and be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> this is like Coachella, but for Jesus. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. <laughs> no, you're not. You're weird. <laughs> you ever meet a creepy Christian? <laughs> oh, come on. Don't point at him. You ever meet a creepy Christian? You meet a creepy creep, you ask them a normal question, hey, how you doing? They're all blessed, highly favored of the Lord. <laughs> like, this, hey, just heads up, weird answer. <laughs> God's so good. God's like, hey, hey, come, come. You can run, you can hide, but just a heads up, once I give you your strength and once I give you the comfort, I just a heads up, I'm so good. I got, I'm going to empower you. My question to you is who empowers you? Are you self-appointed and self-anointed? No, God himself has placed his hand on your head. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows when you stand up and sit down and go out and come in, and he knows the plans he has for you, and he wants to empower you to move out in the direction he's called you to go. When I get in his presence, it's not just strength and comfort. I just feel like, man, there's more. There's more for my life. There's more for my future. And I feel heaven sending me. I feel sent by God. I Just a heads up, I've had the time of my life here in Miami, but I'm going back to L.A. changed. I'm going back to Los Angeles empowered by God. I'm going back because I got strength this weekend. I got comfort this weekend. I feel empowered to shake a city upside down. I feel empowered, come on, to raise my children in the presence of God. I feel empowered by God to preach the good news all over the world. Somebody praise them right now. We're not empowering ourselves. We're getting empowered by God. So we get empowered by God and we receive, I love the last one, we receive an unshakable hope. An unshakable hope. Why is he using the word shaken? Because this is a crowd that is so shaky in their faith. He said, no, when you get in his presence, all of a sudden what, became, what was hopeless, all of a sudden you're now filled with hope. What looked dire, what looked broken, what looked ruined, all of a sudden it's got a chance at redemption. It's got a shot at restoration. It's got a shot at revival because I feel like there's hope hope that's being received. All of this happens in the presence 
of the Lord. Worship team, you can come join me. I love these scriptures so much, and you can hear the urgency that he's riding with to a crowd that wants to go back. No, 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 no. We've got a promise giver, promise keeper. We're not going back. We're going to run into his heart. We're going to hide in his faithfulness. We're going to receive everything that we need in his presence. And he has said all of that to get to my favorite part of today's reading. My favorite part of today's reading is so powerful because the writer goes into symbolism. Watch here on the screens, and you can put up these scriptures here in Hebrews chapter 6. And we'll just go to these last scriptures here. Hebrews 6, this is where we find his strength and comfort, for he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time, an unshakable hope. Put up the next scriptures if you can. And we have this certain hope like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls to God himself. Our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat which sits in the heavenly realm beyond the sacred threshold. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Just love that word anchor right there. It's using a symbol. Anchor. Remember, our faith is marked by symbolism. Like, let's take, for example, the cross. The cross is just a symbol. The cross is symbolic, whether you see it on a necklace or you see it on a bumper sticker. When I see that symbol, it reminds me Jesus chose me over himself. When I see the cross, it reminds me no matter what sickness I have in my body, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. The cross reminds me that when I look at it, I don't have to face eternal damnation. I have the hope of everlasting life because Jesus said it is finished and paid the price for my salvation. Is there anybody thankful for the finished work of the cross today? If you ever get discouraged, just look at the cross. The cross reminds me I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm free, I'm delivered, all from the symbol of the cross. But the writer of Hebrews in this section has chosen an anchor as his symbol. And he is paralleling the words of the Apostle Paul. Paul writes, he says, I pray, this is his words. He say, I pray that you be rooted and grounded in the love of Jesus. But here the writer of Hebrews, he uses the symbol of an anchor. He said, I pray that you be anchored to the love of God. You be anchored to Christ himself. You be anchored to Jesus Write down the fourth and the final thought today. God is trying to anchor you in his love. All of this, the lights, the cameras, the design, the parking team, the kids team, it's also that all of us could be anchored in a love that surpasses knowledge and understanding. And God is wooing you. God is beckoning you. God is romancing you into a place where you drop your anchor and say, I'm anchored in his love. And no situation, no trial, no tribulation, nothing I face is going to unanchor me. Nothing's going to pull me out. No, I'm tethered to Jesus. I'm with Jesus. I've dropped my anchor. I'm not up for sale. No, I'm with Jesus. Come on, somebody praise him right now. Because it's the Father's love that's getting us to drop our anchors and anchor ourselves in the love of Jesus Christ today. That's what he's trying to do. You can always go law of opposite. The devil's trying to do everything he can to get you to be shaky, to get you to be tossed and turned, to not know, to question, to guess. I don't know. Don't drop it. You can't trust him. I'll give you this, that, and the other. Come on, I'll, 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 here's some pills. Here's a, here's a relationship. Here's this. No, no, no. Jesus is saying, just drop your anchor. Drop your anchor. Drop it right now. Drop it right here. I'll promise you. I'll fulfill you. I'll give you strength. I'll give you comfort. I'll empower you. I'll let your faithfulness... My faithfulness go. Come on, hide in my heart. Never forget a few months ago, we were out on a boat in the middle of nowhere. Like middle of nowhere. We were out on this boat and you couldn't see land anywhere. And we were conversating. Pastor Rich and I were together actually. And we're conversating together, having a great conversation. Middle of nowhere, couldn't see any land. And the captain of the boat came back and interrupted our conversation. He said, hey, I don't mean to interrupt, but just a heads up. 
if you wanted to, this would be a perfect place to drop our anchor. And when he said it, my first thought was, um, sir? Uh, sir, why, why here? But I refrained from my reply. And my second thought was, wow, this is not a man with an opinion. This is a man with an experience. And he knew, drop your anchor. Come on, the writer of Hebrews is trying to encourage us, church. He's saying, listen, I've been through some trials. I've been through some tribulations. I remember Melchizedek, but we've got a greater priest right now. We've got a greater prophet right now. And he's trying to get us to drop our anchors. I wish you'd just say, I'm in, heart and soul. I'm dropping my anchor and nothing that's facing me, no storm, no situation, nothing I go through is going to get me to be untethered from the presence of the living God. Come on, somebody thank him. It's what I crave. It's what I need. It's who I want. All I want is Jesus. Oh, come on, if you believe it today, let's lift our voice.